Uh, in this talk, we're going to do a crypt analysis of a uh, two-round uh, event mentor using uh, new, new techniques. So first, what is event mentor? Event mentor aims to be the most simple uh, permutation-based block cipher. It's been introduced by event mentor in 91. And uh, now we'll focus on the single key version by uh, Duncan, Ma Duncan Mann and et al. At, in uh, 2012. So the event mentor cipher takes a n bit to n bit public permutation P, an n bit secret key K, and it builds, it's, it's used this to build a secure block cipher E. Just as you can see on the picture, it takes the plain text, XOR it by the key, make it go through the permutation, and then XOR again by the same key to get the ciphertext. What do we know about this uh, construction? Um, well, from the point of view of an attacker, you have two choices. You can either query the secret block cipher, E, I call D the number of query you make to the keyed, keyed block cipher, or you can query the public permutation, P. I call it Q, the number of call. <coughs> what you can prove for this construction is that it has to be secure as long as the product D times Q is sufficiently below 2 to the N. In other words, you can prove the security up to the birthday bond because you have at least one of those values has to be at least 2 to the N over 2 to get, uh, to, 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 to get over 2 to the N. On the attack side, the same year, uh, Damon proposed uh, an attack in exactly this trade of d times q equal 2 to the n. And even d times t, t being the processing time, the time complexity of the attack. How does it work? Give you a brief overview of how it works. You can uh, see back, uh, I just first named the, the variables. I have x and e of x input output of the key permutation, y and p of y input output of the public permutation. And then you have this property that if x and y differ by the key, then by construction, you have to uh, have that p and y and e of x also differ by the key, just because that's how it's built. And uh, if you sum those two, uh, th those two, uh, two, two equations together, you get that this, the sum of every uh, variable, e x plus e of x plus y plus p of y, must have to be zero. Then the attack is just a collision search, right? You can define uh, two functions, uh, x, x plus e of x, and the other one, y plus p of y. And if you find a collision between those two functions, you get a good guess for the key, because you found a, 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 a pair that satisfies the equation above. In other words, this means that there's no the, the collision searching. We know how to do it. We just do it in a, it's a, it's a birthday bound. We know how to do it uh, if, uh, if quite efficiently in terms of time, just the time to read the, the, the list. So there's really no gap between the best proof in attack in the one run, even more so. However, we look at the, in this talk, we'll talk more about the two round, even more so. What is it? Well, the, it's an extension by Bogdanov et al. in 2012. And the goal is to keep the construction simple, but secure beyond the birthday bond. What we know about it, we can prove the security up to 2 to the 2n over 3. However, when you look at the attack, the time complexity, the best time complexity of the attack is only 2 to the n divided by n, so arguably quite close to, the, to, to, to a brute force of the key. So you have, you have, you, you, you have this gap. Significant, quite, quite significant between the, the best proof and the best attack. <coughs> However, when you look at information theoretic attack, you have one with the trade-off d times q square equal to, to the 2n. So you could have uh, d and q being 2 to the 2n over 3, and, this get, and have an information theory attack. You have enough information to recover the key. However, the best time complexity, the, 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 the issue is not the data, but the processing time of this data. And we don't have anything better than 2 to the n over n. And it's even worse than that, because often they use either a lot of memory, that much memory, or online data, which is arguably even hard to get than uh, processing power. And uh, in this talk, uh, with our new approach, we won't do better in terms of time. We're stuck at this 2 to n by n, but we'll mainly focus on memory and online data to reduce this to a more acceptable level. 
So what's our approach? Well, we do some kind of the same reasoning as before. Just I name Z and P2 of Z the input of foot at the second permutation. And now, same reasoning as before, I say no, I, uh, for any trippers, X, Y, Z, if I have a difference of K between X and Y and uh, also a difference of K between P1 of Y and Z, then by construction, I have the third one for free. I mean, the P2 of Z and E of X will differ by K. Now, I won't sum them all together, but I sum them two by two. The one with the second, the, and the first with the second, and the first with the third one. And I get two equations like this, like those, those two sum, uh, if, I, if I can somehow guess the right key, those two sum will have to be zero. So the goal now is to find such triple. I want to find the triple x, y, z, so that I satisfy this, because this doesn't depend on the key, so I can observe it. And that, I say, is a trigger problem. I just build three functions such that Solving the trees of, finding a solution to the trees of problem over these two fun, three functions is exactly the same as finding a triple x, y, z that satisfies the filter above. And now the, like the strategy is fairly simple. I want to solve the trigger of, and I give a guess. So let's look at the trigger of problem. You can see the trees of problem as a generalization of the well-known collision problem. Collision problem, you have two functions. You want to find two inputs of that. Those two functions exhaust to zero. The trigger of problem, you have three functions. And you want to find three inputs so that those, all the three, three functions on these inputs goes to zero. And in this talk, I often use the version with lists, which is quite equivalent. You're given three lists, and you want to find three elements of that list so that the elements goes to zero. You can think of building this list just by querying the function and having it store in memory. So I have this definition of the trigger, and I show you that cryptanalysis of n bits of two round even months so is you can see it as a kind of trigger with two n bits elements. What do we know about the trig solving the, this uh, instance of trigger? Well, you can easily see for the random trigger that you need to at least collect two to the two n triples to have a solution with good probability. So that means one list must have at least a b of size two to the two n over three. On the other hand, if every list is of size two to the two n over three, then I have n of triples. I could just, just go through all of them and find a solution. So we somehow have a, like, a proof that you, I mean, you must need at least two to the two n over three uh, information and an information theoretic attack in the, that, that matches the proof. However, when you look at the best algorithm for the trigger, you will find like the best one, one runs in time two to the n over n. And that's the exact same gap as, for, as we saw for the true round even month so. So you already understand why we won't do better with this strategy in terms of time, but let's dive a bit deeper in the trigger solving issue get two main techniques in the literature. One is uh, multi-collision based techniques by uh, Nikolic and Sasaki. Uh, and the other one is linear algebra techniques, based techniques by Zhu. And they have roughly the same asymptotic complexity, though combining them seems really not trivial. But you have it. On the other hand, in the Turon cryptanalysis, uh, Turon even months of cryptanalysis literature, except for one case, one exception, all preview cryptanalysis use multi-collision based techniques. Even without knowing the links between the trigger and the, this cryptanalysis, they all, nearly every one of them use multi-collision based techniques. And so now that we have these links, we kind of want to explore more deeply what we could we do with linear algebra based techniques for, doing, for cryptanalyzing this uh, true even month. So, and the result is we could quite effectively reduce the online complexity and the memory at the same time both that are already uh, potentially more costly than processing time. So here you see the previous results and uh, four attacks I will explain later in, in, the, in our paper. Uh, first thing you can see is the, I've put in red all the complexity that is uh, close to two to the n up to log factor. And you can see in the timeline, time column, everyone is red, and we don't really know how to do better than this. However, if you look at previous attacks, 
you get either the data or the memory uh, in red, even for any parameter you, can, you, you choose. Uh, however, in the last three one of our attacks, we can effectively reduce the data and the memory significantly, significantly below 2 to the n, while keeping in the known plain text uh, model. So let's go. So the strategy, I, I, I recall it. We have three lists. I want to solve the tricks over those three lists. And I have a, guess, a good guess for the key. That's it. And the simple one, so is linear algebra based techniques or juice techniques. And I'll explain it right now. So juice techniques require one of the lists to be quite small. You have to take the first list, you only need n words, each word being of size two, two n bits. So you, have a, you can see it as a n by two n bit matrix. And the, the, the trick is to transform it. So you can echelonate column-wise this matrix and find a transformation matrix that will transform the list to like zero bits on the left and the identity matrix on the right. And the idea is that this transformation matrix being invertible, the transform problem with the tricks are with the transform lists will give exactly the same solution as uh, the original tricks are problem. And it's easier to work on the transform lists. Why? Because you know you have one list with only words that starts by zeros. So for the two other elements you want to find, you know that we'll have to uh, have a n-bit partial collision on them. And you, we know how to look for collision. It's easier than solving the tricks out. So it works like this. Compute the transformation matrix with, uh, with the first list. And then you transform your two other lists. You look for partial n bits uh, collision between the two other lists. And you check if you have a solution for every partial collision you found. The complexity then is that <coughs> you have the, you, you, is just going through the biggest list. So you have a complexity uh, memory and computation of 2 to n divided by square root of n. And uh, you have to have those two other lists that big, big so, so, that the, the, so that you have at least 2 to the 2 n triples. Because the first list is limited to n, n words. And so how does it translate for cryptalysis? Just this. We, use, we solve the tricks out with these techniques. And we have our first attack. We obviously chose the, 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 the small list to be the first one because then we have a very low, already very low, uh, non plain text uh, online complexity of data. So we use very few data, and it's enough. And we have a competitive uh, crypto analysis already. But we can do better, right? I just used the random trigger algorithm on this, but we're not in the random case. You can see on the on the how on, on the list that you can you you, you have some uh, you have some power over the over, over the value. If you want to stay in the non plain text, then maybe. You won't uh, fix any value for x or e of x, but you can effectively control y or z, take any value we want. You can even do better. You can implement the inverse of the public permutation. And so you could have a z, z, z prime and, P, uh, and the inverse of, uh, of, uh, of the second permutation on z prime. And now you can still control y and z prime without even having like <coughs> It's just computation. You choose what you, what you query. And then, what can you do? Well, imagine you have, uh, you, 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 you're targeting an online complexity of 2 to the d. Then you will need to have an uh, offline complexity of 2 to the n minus d over 2. So you get a solution with good probability. And so you can decide to qu only query y and z prime so that they end by d over 2 zeros. So it's just force the zero to align there. And what does it allow you to do? Well, it means that you already have a filter on the first words, and you can preselectively reject all the, all the values in the first list that doesn't end by zeros, because then it wouldn't be a solution. So you do just that. And the, the, what, you, what it gives you after clumping is reduced size lists. So instead of, of, of uh, having a first list of size 2 to the d, you reduce to 2 to the d over 2. And the, the word's size also is bit reduced. And now I can use any, any, any algorithm I want. 
So maybe I, I know I'm, now I go back to literature and I look for algorithms that deal with arbitrary size lists. So I have more freedom. The first one was given by Wagner's in the General's Boys Day paper. It's a, may, maybe a naive one, but we have recently a work by Bouliaguet de la Place and Fouque that, does, that uh, study a bit more like, uh, this uh, algorithm and proposed two of them. One that is roughly like repeating those algorithm a number of uh, time, chunk by chunk. And uh, they say in the paper, it's, the, it's maybe one of the most realistic approach for realistic world side. So that, 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 that's one of them with this trade, complexity trade-off. And you have another one also, which is actually the best known asymptotic complexity for solving the trigger. Though they also show in the paper that it's maybe quite unrealistic. You have big, big constants hidden out there that makes not really work for realistic world size. But you have a good asymptotic complexity. Now I'm just plugging the size of the list, and I have my complexity of the attacks. So you can see the naive one, just not better than brute forcing, but the second one is always better, the, is, is, is very competitive. You have two to n over n. We don't know really do much better. And actually, we can even have better synthetic complexity, though it's not practical, for solving the, this. This, this, makes, this makes these attacks work. So um, actually, we. In, in the second attack, we have, we have better time like was proposed before, but it's only asymptotic, so it's not. Now, all I'm left to do is to present you the low data attack. The low data attack uses maybe a different trick. So you remember Drew's techniques. You just transform with any transformation you want, as long as it's invertible, the problem are equivalent. Now, I do just technique, but with even smaller number of words. So think of lambda as being a parameter that is maybe one half, like a fraction of n. So have a fraction of n words, still of size two to two, two n. And now I can eslanate, but only the right part, right? And I'll still be left with some zeros because it's, it's only a fraction of n. Again, imagine one half. So I have a fr n over two uh, matrix of zeros and an uh, identity uh, matrix. Now remember, we can, we, are, we can choose y and z prime. After transformation, to get the transform problem, well, if I know the matrix M and it's, and, and it's invertible, I can still choose y times M and z prime times M. I have control over them. So I just force the collision. I have above, I know that I have to, I have to be zeros there, so I can choose any alpha fix it, and now I, I, know I have a kind of a free collision on those bits. And uh, how do I finish? Well, I just eslanate to the end and use just techniques to find if, if there's a solution. Though there may not be a solution when I fix the particular alpha, I can just retry until I find a solution for any other value alpha I want. And because you have this collision for free, and also, uh, you, 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 you will have uh, this uh, time complexity, like 2 to the n over lambda n. It's very competitive, what we know. We have a very low data, to, like lambda n, and more importantly, the memory consumption. Because they are only contain uh, 2 to the lambda n elements, like, remember, I query for, I query for all the values uh, left the, uh, and on the right of the value alpha, so we have only lambda n bits of freedom. And when I choose another alpha, I can just throw away all the lists and query again. So the memory consumption really is only like, again, imagine lambda being one over two, it's two to the n over two, which is much more reasonable than having a memory close to two to the n. Uh, okay, so here are some takeaway. So I showed you that after some clumping, uh, we, we, we could use any generic trees algorithm we could find. And this, in, at this point of time, this, we couldn't really have a better time uh, complexity, but who knows, maybe in the future we could find faster tricks or solver, and that would immediately get us faster to run even more so cryptanalysis. However, 
uh, um, this may also be an indication that because it really seems really hard to solve this tricks up problem faster, maybe it explains why it's hard to solve, like to do the creep analysis faster than than close to to, to the end, up to log factor. It's really hard to gain more. more. Uh, also, like we have two choices, we really, we have between linear algebra and multi collision techniques. They are hard to combine and they use roughly as much computation. However, it's clear that uh, linear algebra techniques use less memory. You, you, you have a much better management of memory for, on, on those techniques, which is, is interesting. Uh, another remark, if you look at the low data trade-off, you have that this uh, d times t is really equal to two to the n, which is the same trade-off you find for the proof of the one run even monso which means that since obviously the, this proof applies to the two round one, this means that this attack is information theoretically efficient only for this small like data range, the fraction of n. Uh, now another remark. Uh, well, I've shown you that the two round even month, so I can rewrite it as a trig XOR problem with two n-bit elements. What about the three round, four round? No, if I get the four round even month, so yes, I can write it as a five XOR problem, just like this. It's a five XOR problem with four n bits elements getting bigger. And you can see there's very strong structure now. You have zeros popping up. And, but who knows? Like, in general, you can write a R round even month so clear analysis as a special kind of R plus one XOR with R times n bits elements. And maybe that's a good start to start thinking for new ways to cryptanalyze this, uh, this iterative construction. Uh, so this is my last slides. So we get a new cryptanalysis with new data trade, uh, with new trade-off, with good management of data and memory. I showed you to, to get to this, and I showed you the link between the two round even months and the tricks or problem could explore new linear algebra techniques. And uh, that's, that's really like, uh, in, in our opinion, we, we could, uh, we, we could uh, have better complexity profile on the, really the bottleneck of previous attacks that were either the data or the memory usage. Thank you. Thank you, is there any questions? Yeah, this one, yeah. Thanks for the work. Um, what about cycle finding techniques? Wouldn't, is it completely outrageous to hope for memory uh, reductions? Uh, it seems quite hard to do a reduction because uh, you have the, the structure for discrete analysis that you don't get for the random case. And uh, and the last attack actually shows that uh, you can you you can uh, you can have better like for, for the small range of data you, you you can you're below the the you, you don't collect two to d two and triples though you have to do you have to add as much for the uh, the random tricks or case so I I wouldn't hope for 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 a reduction in uh, for, to the tricks or issue but. Uh, but maybe, maybe you have this un, some underlying complexity that is common and you can read us to this. I don't know. <laughs> is there any further question? I guess then we thank the, all the four authors again and we go for the break. <laughs> <laughs>